Hey there, my name is Llewellyn Dalton and I am the Infusionsoft business coach that has been assigned to you to either onboard you as a new Infusionsoft client or to help you if you've been stuck. I want to just spend 20 minutes and give you the essentials to show you what, it, what Infusionsoft is capable of, to show you where to not get stuck, but just to demonstrate that it actually is a very easy tool to use. It's not complicated, it's comprehensive. So what does it allow you to do? It allows you to build a sales conversation online. Maybe mixed with some telephone calls, but it allows you to automate how that will all happen. Now if you try and walk up to somebody and just sell something to them, well it's not going to work because they don't trust you. Statistically, people will buy from you after you have um, contacted them in some shape or form five to seven times. Now, we don't get to do that because we get busy, we get um, preoccupied, we're busy delivering our product and things just fall through the cracks. So a tool like Infusionsoft enables you to automate some of those steps, if not all of those steps, and it's consistent, it's a machine, it's not going to forget. So, what happens in a sales conversation? Two things happen. You are building trust. You are allowing the person to get to know you. You are allow, allowing the person to get to know your product by, by telling them valuable stuff about your, your context that you're selling into. You can um, set yourself up as somebody they don't know, starting there to maybe this person can be my trusted advisor. You can do that in emails. You can do that with various um, items that you can put out there in front of your client. At the same time, you might be wanting to sift out who are really going to buy from you. You don't want to spend time and money on people who are just looking. Maybe you do, but you want to just put them on the side and focus on the, the 10 people or the 100 people or maybe the 1,000 people that's going to buy from you. So Infusionsoft gives you tools to be able to see who's getting hot and who's getting cold. I'm going to demonstrate that to you. I'm also going to demonstrate to you how to build Infusionsoft in an easy manner. It's not as complicated as people think. Um, it's logical. You can drag and drop items. It's, it's visual um, more than any other tool and you can see what you're building and it makes sense. So I'm going to encourage you to just get over the overwhelm. It's a half a dozen things that you need to know and you can build your first campaign. So that's not so complicated, is it? So how would you do that in Infusionsoft? So I'm going into Campaign Builder. Now here on the side you have goals and sequences. A goal is something that you want somebody to do. It's something that you're putting out there, some question, some hook, um, something that you're asking a person to do. Just like in a sales conversation, you would ask somebody a question and then you'd wait for the answer. And based on how they answer you, you would do something in return. So. I'm, I'm going to just to demonstrate how you would start a campaign um, from the beginning. So typically you would put a form out there on your website and you ask, you're sending somebody to a form and you're saying, well, I might give you a free PDF or a 15 minute free consultation or um, here's my promo code. Take this code and you can get 20% off my, off my product. Um, and to get them to fill in your form so that you know about them and become a lead or a prospect. You would then answer them with a thank you email. And I've just taken a sequence and dropped a sequence there. I'm just going to name it. And you would join those. Now what you're looking at here, a goal in a sequence, is the top level campaign structure. There's three levels at least below that. So think of it as you're standing on the top of a roof of a building. And in a while I'm going to click, double click on one of those and go inside it. So an Infusionsoft 
campaign would be goal, sequence, goal, sequence. So you would be putting some emails in the sequence. You would be putting some emails out there to ask the person to do something. So I've put something behind here called a tag. And what we will put in the emails that we send would be calls to action. And when somebody clicks on that, go and download my PDF, go watch my video, go read my blog, fill in my questionnaire or my survey. When they click on that, a tag will appear because we will configure it to appear. And this tag will pull the person out of the sequence and put them into the next sequence. And you already have your first bit of automation. So how does that happen? First thing that people don't see in Infusionsoft, there's a little flag on the sequence. And when I click on that little flag, it's going to open up two boxes. The one is to stop immediately and the other one is to run until completed. So stop immediately is when the person gives you what you wanted them to do, you stop the emails. You don't send them more emails, otherwise they would think you're spamming them. When it's configured with the Chevron, when would you use that? Well, let's put it in the second sequence, that you're offering them a five-issue video course that you're going to drip feed them one by one over five days. So you would put your five-day video course, which is free, in that sequence. And you're not going to stop that sequence for anything because you said you would send them all five all in a row, one after the other. So you can see there the flag and the chevron, the difference between them. So now, if I click inside the sequence, I get different types of items here. I get timers, and I get the ability to communicate, or I get process icons. So the first thing you're going to want to do is say thank you in an email. So you can place an email, followed by a a delay timer, followed possibly by another email, followed by another delay timer. Now these delay timers are very easy to configure. They three days, 20 minutes, four weeks, whatever you choose, and then you can say run on a weekday, and so on. They're easy to configure. Um, there are the two other types of timers here. There's a date timer. You would use this sparingly. Because if you use a date timer and you want to reuse the campaign, you have to go back and change the dates. So you wouldn't use that very often. And then there's a different type of timer called a field timer. Now that is a timer that has a date in a field. Either a, a standard field or a custom field. Like a birthday or an anniversary or the date they bought something or subscribed to something. And you can use that timer to time something on the day, or a week before, or a month before, or a week after, or a month after. Um, you you, when you click on it, you'll see how easy it is to configure that. Now, if I tried to use one of these other timers in this sequence, and I tried to connect it, it won't let me. You see it's lighting up red, because you can't mix timers. Um, you can have one type of timer in one sequence. So, how often should you email somebody? Well, some clever guy called Fibonacci, he was an Italian mathematician, came up with an algorithm which somebody else decided is a good idea to apply to email marketing. It goes like this. So, if you mail somebody on the day when they opted in, and you'd mail them the day after, one day later, and you add those two numbers, and then you get two, so you wait two days before you email them again, and then you add those two numbers, two and one and two, then you get three, then wait five days, eight days, 13 days, 21 days, you get the picture. If you do this, you're allowing somebody to slowly s cool down without spamming them. So how does automation work? Inside these emails, I'm going to go one level further down into an email now. If you've not configured an email yet, you'll just find the templates that are in, in, built into Infusionsoft. So these templates here, I'm just going to choose one. 
So, I'm now t showing you how to configure an email, drag and drop. So, if I wanted to, I'm going to pull, uh, I'm going to delete this image that's here. And I'm going to pull in another image from the side here, you see these? So, I'm going to pull in an image there. Now, I'm going to browse. So, let's say you don't have an image to pull in here you're not organized enough to have you, you but you have a website or you have a blog I'm going to go to my website so I want to change I want to take this image I'm going to take a quick snapshot of it you can do exactly what I'm doing I'm just taking a snapshot I'm going to open that on that page and I'm going to ask this site to give me a color palette there we go I've just been given a very nice color palette with the colors on the side here. So now I have colors that I can use on a landing page and on, in my emails without having to guess the numbers are on the side here. So now I'm going to browse for those two images. So there we go. I've got my little two speech bubbles which is my brand called Smart Communication. And I want to put that there because here in this email I want to uh, talk about if you have difficulty writing email copy, check out this free blog. Click here. So the first way that you can highlight that and then go onto this paper clip, click there and put in, put in the URL. I'm just going to put... Uh, now the thing that I want to show you is I can tag this. I'm going to call this clicked to download. And I'm going to create this tag right here. See how easy I've done it? I've just created a tag and that tag there, that means is So I'm going to insert this into this email. Now I'm going to go one step back out of this email, another step back out of the sequence. And now I'm going to take that tag over there and I'm going to put the same tag in there, clicked. It'll come up because I've just clicked to download. So now, in the email, every email I'm putting the same call to action click here to download and then I've placed a tag behind it and when people click on that email on that hyperlink in that email Infusionsoft's going to pull them out of the email and put them into the next sequence and that sequence is going to stop so there's your first bit of automation I can also do this in a different way I could configure this button now earlier I told you how easy it is if I went back to those um, colors I could change the color of this button um, to one of something that fits my branding um, but here I'm going to configure this button and I'm going to say go to a URL I'm going to put that same URL in here and I'm going to create the same tag so click click to download and done so now I've shown you two things already I've shown you how to put an image into an email I've shown you how to hyperlink just some text and I've shown you how to hyperlink a button now other things you can put into an email like this I can put a video here and all I have to do is go to YouTube Vistia or uh, Vimeo and fetch the URL and place the URL in here now just be careful with emails you just need the last part of the URL and with a landing page you need the whole URL but it's pretty much the same and you go share and you go share and you take the URL copy it to go to the campaign now I'm going to paste that URL in there see how quickly it populates and now it looks like you can play the video in the email which, which of course you can't I can resize it so it looks like I want to see it and there we go we have a video embedded kind of in our email other things that you can do if I take these social buttons and place them at the bottom here you'll see they all appear there all you have to do is paste your URL for your Facebook page for your Twitter account for LinkedIn YouTube Google Plus Pinterest if you placed an image and you had too much text let's say um, I'm, I want this image smaller than that and now there's too much text you just take some of the text um, and copy it into another text bar so I'll put some text below that 
and I'll paste it in there so it'll wrap around. Now, this is a bit um, all over the show because I'm just demonstrating to you, but on the side here, I can preview this and see what it will look like on a desktop and see what it will look like on a mobile phone. On a mobile phone, it's going to populate top to bottom, left to right, just like you read a book. Something that makes Infusionsoft very strong is the fact that you can segment your list on the fly as a campaign is happening. So how would that happen? If I have a sequence here and I split the sequence into three parts and I call this, let's, go, let's say these are video candidates because they said they expressed some interest in video or in Fusionsoft support or somebody who is interested in Facebook ad adverts. If I knew that about these people because I asked them in a form or asked them to click on something and I tagged that, then I can um, connect these sequences like this and look what happens here. This decision making diamond appears here. Now if I click on this diamond, some rules will appear. So rules for video candidates. I can create the rule by going if the contacts tags or fields I'm going to go tags contains assuming I've tagged them as video candidates then when I've done that a rule when some when a contact comes along this path Infusionsoft will know to put them into that sequence and now I can talk to people or I can sell to people or converse with them via email in three different ways. I can change the conversation and you can you can send the right message to the right person at the right time. Some rules that's already built into Infusionsoft. You notice here that I've connected a sequence to a sequence. Infusionsoft allows you to do that because perhaps you want to split up the conversation. That's okay to do. But if I try to connect a goal to a goal, it's going to come up with a red because it's going to say you can't do that. So there's some rules that safeguard you in Infusionsoft already. Now another thing that you might want to do, let's say um, I'm going to change, I'm going to put another goal at the, bot at the back here. I'm going to put a shopping cart. So this whole campaign is to sell somebody a video production product. That's what this sequence is doing. Um, but let's say somebody comes along and I just meet them at a networking meeting or online and they buy the same product from me but now I want to send them some instructions about this is what you're going to experience as we're building up to doing your video, that kind of thing. So um, some pre-filming What if somebody bought this product and they didn't come through the sequence? Well, I could either go and build the same sequence somewhere else, or I can configure the shopping cart, and you can do that with any goal, by clicking on it. Oh, sorry. By clicking on the actual little green icon, and changing it to this goal can be achieved by any contact. That doesn't make sense. The English there doesn't make sense. It should really read this goal can be achieved from anywhere. Which means somebody can drop into the sequence without having been in the campaign before. Now be careful of this because if you want that to happen, let's say, I'm going to give you another example. Let's say you're sending them here after your first thank you sequence you're sending them to a form where you're asking them a little bit a few more questions or registration form you're asking them to register for a webinar or something um, 
If you get excited like I did just recently on a project and I forgot to do this and then somebody decided well let's send people via Facebook to that same form they will drop into the form go into Infusionsoft but they won't drop into the campaign you have to configure it so that somebody can get into this campaign from somewhere else and the what you see when you configure it like this is a little person a little character with an arrow which means somebody can drop into this campaign from a different place so you're busy warming up your list how do you know they're getting warm to buy from you I'm going to show you on a different tab it's, um, you can't see because I didn't open the window wide enough but if you paste the same URL that's at the top there when you're in Infusionsoft into a different place um, you can have Infusionsoft open on multiple tabs and once you've used Infusionsoft for a little while it'll be in your cache so you can just type in the first five digits in my case it's FO109 if I start typing it I'll already see a URL pop up and I can just click on it and I'll have a second instance of Infusionsoft so now I'm going to look for a contact and I look for myself there I am so the these flames that appear here they either mean I'm getting warmer as a prospect or they mean I'm getting colder as a prospect so how do those flames happen I'm going to show you so you hover over the Infusionsoft icon here and you go into um, CRM settings and there you'll see scores now this account is already configured a, a normal new Infusionsoft account will have a few other rules just delete those you delete them by pressing these minuses oops I shouldn't have done that um, I'll have to recreate that and also it'll be three points equals five flames change that to 10 or 20 10 is good um, and then you really only need two rules this one rule if the contacts activity contains an email that's been opened give them one point and make it last two weeks very important if you've emailed somebody three months ago and they opened an email that does not mean they're a hot lead it means they're entirely cold so you need to configure it so that it expires and there's a hint in that you need to email people with valuable content frequently every two weeks without spamming them so yes there's some work to, to be done there to come up with new content I will actually say a few things about writing content quickly as well so the other rule that I will create here is the, if the contacts activity contains a link click give them three points and make it last two weeks those are the only two rules that you need so let me say something about writing copy it's not complicated people make it complicated and people freeze most of the clients that we have as um, new onboarding coaches they get stuck because of copy so let me tell you how to write copy. You write copy in your own voice as if you're speaking to someone. And there's a little um, acronym. Um, so you grab their attention by saying, are you, and you describe the ideal person. So you get their attention. The next thing you say, do you have this problem? And you say what the problem is. So you get their interest. And then you pull their desire by saying, would it be of interest to you? Wouldn't it be interesting? Wouldn't it be valuable if? And you tell them how to, not how to solve the problem, but tell them that you can solve the problem. And then you give them an action. Always give them an action. Say, click here, go there, pick up the phone. That's copy. In my view, in any case. And if you're stuck, just apply that little rule. But overall, just say what you need to say. 
run it by somebody by all means, but don't get stuck on, on it's so difficult. It's not difficult. And let me tell you, if people are interested in you and you're building rapport with them, it doesn't really matter what you're saying. It's the fact that you are writing to them in the first place. An email that is sent is far more valuable than an email that is still being thought about. Send those emails. Some key things that you need to ask yourself when you're building a campaign. When I show you how to build it, I'll start at the beginning so you can see logically this is how it works. But when you think through how to build an Infusionsoft campaign, you start with the outcome. You start with the thing that you want to have happen ultimately. Let's say you want to sell a product. Maybe that's too big for one campaign. Maybe you want an intermediary sort of a step. You want an appointment because you know if you get in front of someone, you're going to sell to them. They're going to buy from you. Eight out of ten people might buy from you. You'd know. So many clients tell me the desired outcome is a telephone call. If I can get them on the phone. So you start with a desired outcome and then you work backwards. So you place a goal and then you ask yourself this one question. What needs to happen for that to happen? And then logically figure that out. Well, I need to tell them some things. Then you know what you need to put in an email. And then perhaps there's some intermediate steps. So let's think this through. Um, for somebody to buy your product, they first have to show some interest. That's an intermediate step. For them to be able to show some interest, they first need to know that you exist. That's an intermediate step. So you can build little steps to move somebody through in what many people will call a pipeline or a funnel. Not complicated. It works like this. Goal, sequence, goal, sequence, goal. And sometimes you might split into more than one sequence and then you have a segmented list and then you can treat that one sequence as a target audience on its own. You might want to speak to one particular type of um, prospect differently to another type of prospect. Okay, in closing, hopefully you watch this even before we even speak, um, which is why I'm putting myself on video so that you know who is going to be helping you. There's some practical things that will save us time, especially if you're a quick start client. We only have three hours. It's not a lot of time, but I'd like to, I'd like to give you as much value as possible in that time. So, things that you'd need to do. Please come to the call already logged on so that we can start straight away. You might have forgotten your password. Solve that before you come to the call. Um, I'm only thinking of your time, not mine. Another key thing that needs to happen before we have the call, I need to have access to your account. I'm going to show you, I'll talk through how to do this. To give me access, I need you to click on the icon in Infusionsoft on the top left and then on the far um, right, that menu there, um, under admin, I think it is, um, third down, you'll see users, click on that. Under users, on the top right, you will see a button for add a partner, click on that. And then in um, where, it, where it's asking you for a partner ID, put my email address. It's my team email address. It's support at excella.co.uk, support at excella.co.uk. Dot co dot uk and please make sure that the admin button is turned to yes and then go send invitation if you've done that and perhaps then send me an email to say you've done it especially if you're a quick start client then i can get into your account and look under the hood i don't know if that's a word that works in america under the trunk at the engine see what's going on even before we speak and have a little bit, a bit of a bird's eye view of um, what's going on in your account. I look forward to meeting you um, on the call. Um, if you want to go on video, um, I promise I will look my best, um, but you don't have to. Some clients don't like that. Um, it's your call. 
um, just um, either turn on the video as you come onto the Zoom call or don't. Um, e either works. We're going to spend a lot of time um, sharing the screen and um, I might take over your keyboard but we're going to build campaign.